We welcome the new year without the presence of Kondo and Okita by our side. An eerie, blood-red sun set over the Kyoto horizon. It was dusk on January 3rd, 1868. The only thing strong enough to cut through the icy chill of winter was the distant pang of gunfire in the direction of Toba. I wasn't sure if it was the Shogunate army or the Satsuma Choshu that had shot first, but this first gunshot was the final straw. Before we'd known it, the Shogunate army and the Satsuma Choshu were at war. At long last, Kyoto had become a battlefield, just as Yamazaki had predicted. Of course, the Fushimi Magistrate, face of the Shinsengumi, was not safe from the threat of battle. Around 800 riflemen had gathered from the Satsuma Choshu camps to surround the Magistrate. They were armed with advanced weaponry, which made the task all the more difficult for the Shinsengumi to deal with. Not to mention cannons. Chezaru! Sorry, we got another wounded over here! Lay him down along the wall! Wrap where he's bleeding and apply pressure! Are you alright, Harada? Your arm is bleeding! Meh, I'll spit on it. Good as new. I'm gonna head back out. Watch that one! Okay, be safe! Harada... The fiery roar of the cannonballs made me shake as I cowered on the floor listening above. Only a day had passed since the fighting started. I barely had any time to prepare, and I was tending to the injured in the triage we'd set up in the Magistrate's common room. Your bleeding will stop soon. In the meantime, please get some rest. No. I must return back to the front line immediately. You can't! You need to rest until these wounds heal. But the other men are waiting for me. Please, just let me go. <laughs> Even though I performed the bare minimum on them, the men returned to the battlefield. They should be in bed recovering. But they found the resolve to drag their bruised, ragged bodies back to the battlefield out of dedication to their comrades. All these, all these comrades. However, it seemed as though as I rushed them through their treatment, they would quickly go into the battlefield, then back into our triage. It was becoming a dangerous cycle. I don't want any more people to get hurt. The conflict was building more and more in my heart, but I couldn't stop treating them. How was everyone doing? Hijikata, Sayato, Nagakora, Harada, Inoue, and Shimada. And... Yamazaki. Everyone, please be safe. Almost like an answer from the Divine. Oh, look who it is! <sighs> the minute I'd seen Yamazaki walk in, I shouted, Yamazaki! You're safe! Oh, it's you, Yukimura. I am happy to see you are safe as well. Have you just been here tending to all of these injured men during this time? Yes, the wounded have been carried in here almost non-stop since this morning. How is it out there? Is everyone safe? It's been a little rough. Nagakora and Shimada formed a little last-ditch effort to charge at the enemy, but... The opposition all fired at once, and then they retreated. Saito and Harada, same thing. No. Even the captains were. A thick silence slunk between us, and behind us was the repeating boom of cannon fire. In this moment, there were so many of our men who were suffering the constant fear of danger. Warriors, who'd spent their time and dedication with us, are in pain. I could be speaking with someone in one moment, and in the next they could be mortally injured. Thinking that... <laughs> I felt greatly compelled to grab Yamazaki tightly by the hand and stop him from leaving. Because <laughs> you know, girl, you know what happens if he goes out there. Yukimura? I'm a little scared. When the thought of you being the next person to become hurt comes to mind. Mm. Don't worry. My job is to watch from the back, and check from the distance the status of each location, then report it to the commander quickly. So, there is no way I can get hurt. I couldn't. Even if I wanted to. Yamazaki? I could hear a hint of self-deprecation in his words, and I furrowed my brow as I looked at him. Yamazaki then snapped to look in the distance as the thunderous cannons rang above us. 
I feel bad that you're so worried about me, but... There are times when I'm envious of the men fighting on the battlefield. And... why is that? Because I am forbidden to fight. Yamazaki gripped his knuckles as if he were about to break them. He bit the corner of lips. <laughs> the corner of lips. Before breaking into a pained confession. As you know, I am the watch of the Shinsengumi. I act as their secret intelligence. So, even in a war like this, my commands are to gather information and communicate it to the commander as soon as possible. So yes, even if my closest teammates were on the cusp of death, my priorities are to deliver key messages above anything. I could understand what he meant. During times of war, information was crucial. As in, gathering resources to strategize well, knowing where reinforcements were needed. A late report could be the difference between victory and defeat almost every time. But feeling helpless as his comrades potentially lost their lives must have weighed so heavily on him. Throughout the war, I'd watched many of my fellow warriors on the battlefield. Yet I cannot join them, no matter how difficult the fighting may get. I'm the only one that can't fight. I'm the one holding back. Yamazaki, who normally remained composed, struggled to keep his hands steady from anger. I couldn't watch him this way. You are fighting, Yamazaki, or I know what you mean. Um, I'm gonna say... It's like, if you say you are fighting, then yes. Um, it's like reminding him that his duty is important and it's helping the war effort, which he knows. It's why he stayed back all this time, even though he so badly wants to help his comrades when they're in danger. I think we should just be sympathetic and like, I understand how you feel, because she thought that herself just now. I don't want to encourage this boy to get into any fights anyway. <laughs> it's hard, but it's admirable that you hold back and do your duty anyway, even though you have jumped in and save Toshi at the very least, and I don't know how you get hurt the other roots normally. But anyway, I'm gonna do I know what you mean. I know what you mean. You do? Yes, I feel the same way. I also have no way of fighting, even if I wanted to. That's true too. She can actually understand from that point of view. She feels so useless a lot of the times. Like, everyone's just fighting to protect me, and I'm bringing danger to everyone, and I'm not any help at all. Yamazaki turned his head dubiously, and I smiled. I placed my hand over where my heart was. At the Akeda, Hamaguri, and Abarona Koji, during all of these important battles, I always had someone else protecting me. Even now, I'm no good at fighting, so I'm stuck here. Even so, I wanted to do my part for the Shinsengumi in any way that I could. That's why I've been treating the wounded. I may not be any good at swinging a sword, but I'm fighting this war in my own way. That was a really nice speech, Chizuru. I gotta give you kudos for that. Oh. For a second, Yamazaki gazed at me with tender eyes. Oh, are those the tender eyes? They are quite beautiful. Eventually, he curled his lips and he smiled brightly. Sorry, Yukimura. Saying that you're not fighting because you can't swing a sword is an insult to you. Haha! <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's kind. N no, not at all! I didn't mean to say something out of line! Besides, that's nothing to apologize for. No, please allow me to apologize. Fighting in your own way, huh? Thank you, Yukimura. I am going to return to the battlefield proudly. That's my boy. So that I may fulfill my duties. Alright. Good luck. So proud of you, Bean. I saw Yamazaki off, giving a slow, long sigh after watching him leave me. <sighs> it really was a rare sight to see Yamazaki express his feelings like that. Yamazaki had always been so level-headed, I hadn't known there was that side to him. He was becoming more... 
familiar to me. And with that, I returned attending to the wounded. Won't think about that too much just yet. January 5th, 1867. Wow. Oh. Ah! Damn it! Hey, you all right, Chizuru? Y yeah somehow Just a little shaken. As the days progressed, the hellish cannon fire was becoming closer and closer to us. By this morning, their cannons had finally started hitting the Magistrate directly. Two whole days had passed since the war started, and that seemed to be enough to determine the final outcome. Oh, hey, Sanan. This situation is becoming quite dire. Is there anything we could do, Sanan? If it has reached this point, the Fury Corps is at its limit. Of course, we could attempt to bring our own artillery into it, but it would be pointless. <laughs> Fade to black after another explosion. Everything is quite dire. Oh. And as if fate sought to vindicate Sanon, the cannon fire became more bombastic in the background. Eventually, the flames began to engulf the magistrate. I watched as the smoke and fire tore the roof down from sections of the building. In the corner of my eye, I saw Hichikata wincing to himself and trying to contain his anger. God damn these Satsuma Choshu bastards! Hichikata? Where are you going? Seriously, I'm gonna push those Satsuma Choshu fuckers back. It's too dangerous! Look, I can see that. All our men are being overwhelmed by all this shit right now. If I want the men to keep the morale up, it's up to me to lead the charge. Hijikata irately clanged his sword against the charred ground and he stepped into the bleakness. However, blocking him from moving forward was Yamazaki. Talk some sense into him. Please, Commander, wait. I cannot afford to let you go. What's this about, Yamazaki? You, of all people, should know. We are being completely overpowered by enemy forces. Even more reason for me to get out there. If their commander is leading from the front, then I'm sure the others will- Your presence will only temporarily help them. How dare you talk this way to me, Yamazaki? Are you really telling me that leading my men won't help them? If I wasn't afraid of you misinterpreting the meaning of what I'm telling you, then yes. Two purple-eyed boys staring down each other. <laughs> I could feel my cheeks vibrate from the grumble of the floor below before bullets began raining down near where we'd stood. However, Yamazaki and Hijikata were still glaring at one another, neither one willing to budge. Yamazaki! Hijikata! It's dangerous here! We have to get away! Don't be stupid. Kondo trusted me to lead these men. How could you think I wouldn't fight for them? I can't stand cowardice. If this is the case, then we might as well- Well, what? What do you plan on doing? Yamazaki's retort made Hijikata gasp. Wow, Hijikata gasping. Ugh. What Yamazaki did next shocked me. He'd grabbed Hijikata by the collar. Wow. Screw all that. You have no idea what your life is worth to all of us. I don't think I could ever imagine Yamazaki crossing Hijikata in the way I was witnessing. However, Hijikata didn't seem angry from this display, and instead he just stared back. Yamazaki. We're already missing Chief Kondo. That makes you, you, the only thing keeping the Shinsengumi together now. What are you trying to prove, standing on the front lines of a losing side? You alone have the power to use your men to keep yourself alive, so that you can survive to lead them another day. That is what it means to be a leader. Am I wrong, Commander? Ugh. Please, Commander. Order the retreat. For a second, it seemed time stood still, and the cannon fire felt a million miles away. 
At the moment, all the commotion from the violence and the flames didn't seem to matter. Who would have guessed you'd ever be the one lecturing me? Hedgy caught a murmur to himself, and he shook his head as if it cleared his mind. Then his expression became a bright one. Sorry, Yamazaki. Yeah, you're right. This isn't the time or place for me to risk my life right now. There will be other chances to skin those bastards out there. Then... Yeah. Listen up, guys! We're getting out of here! Whoa! We really waited till the last minute this time around! <laughs> Good job, Yamazaki. Even though he declared an order of retreat, puffing his chest up confidently as he spoke, the clarity of Hichikata's commands cut through the sounds of cannon fire around us. The winter sky was turning gray from the seemingly endless smoke plumes scattered around us. Covering our bodies was the bitter taste of soot, and defeat was starting to sink in. Our bodies were heavy with fatigue, dragging us and our hearts into an unshakable darkness. Along with Yamazaki, Shimada, Inoue, and a few other warriors, I was able to escape the Magistrate, if only barely. Are you alright, Yukimura? You must be tired. You've been working non-stop since the start of the war. Well, that goes for you too, Yamazaki. As well as the rest of the men. I'm not in any position to complain about what's going on. I see. Regardless, Yodo Castle is only just up this way. The leader of the Yodo Domain is one of the Shogunate's Council of Elders, so I am certain that they'll welcome us as allies of the Shogunate. Okay then, let's get there as soon as possible. I nodded to Shimada and we take in a gander at our surroundings. Every single warrior around us was covered in either blood or soot, and their heads hung low. I couldn't blame them, though. Machine Sengumi had been slowly gaining renown and prestige from their last few battles, so because this was their first real loss, it hit hard. What will become of the Shinsengumi in the future? I found myself muttering those words to myself as I'd scanned the devastation around me. It had been four years since I'd arrived in Kyoto. I was detained by the Shinsengumi, living with warriors throughout this whole time. Maybe I took my situation for granted, and I'd figured the Shinsengumi would be around forever. What if they were to... I was suddenly brought back to reality as Yamazaki brushed my hand lightly with his sleeves. Then I found myself reflexively grabbing onto his sleeves out of desperation. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is it, girl? Yamazaki's eyes slightly grew wide in surprise. Everything will be okay, Yukimura. The Shinsengumi will be fine. This isn't the end. Yamazaki moved a little awkwardly, trying to find my trembling hands so that he could hold them. <laughs> Thank you! It will be alright. Even if we lose this war, our setbacks will be temporary, and we won't give up. I vow to protect you, here and in the future. Okay. Yamazaki's kind words set my heart at ease. I gripped his hand tightly, as if clinging to it for warmth. Just then... <laughs> Shimada's just like, well, what's going on over there? Hmm. I noticed Shimada was smiling, watching our interaction. Are we in the way here? What? Wait, just wait a minute. What do you mean by that, Shimada? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Just... Watching you, Yamazaki. It feels like you've grown up so much. Huh? Grown up? Me? Yes, you. I mean, I've been with you for a few years now, Yamazaki. So I'm sure of it. At least, the old Yamazaki would never have suggested retreat, even if it meant disobeying the commander's orders. Now that you mention it, you have a point. Shimada smiled warmly, looking at me for a second before turning to face Yamazaki again. Suddenly, though, his expression became serious. Yamazaki would never think twice about giving his own life for the sake of his mission. I think it is one of his strengths, 
But at the same time, it is his weakness. Shimada. That is why I began to think. Yamazaki very much needs someone that will support him and stay by his side. Shimada, does that mean... Just as Yamazaki was about to respond... Ah! Well, we were having a nice moment. Where are those gunshots coming from? From over there! Oh no! As I recalled, Inoue was in the front of the troop! I could almost feel the blood leaving my body. My stomach dropped from the thought of it. Almost as if to confirm my worst fears. <sighs> Inoue appeared, blood gushing from his abdomen, and he was wheezing with strained breaths. Inoue! Are you okay? What just happened? That gunshot came from... Everyone! Run! Yodo Castle has betrayed the Shogunate! What? How? Did the Yodo Domain join the Satsuma Choshu too? Yes. Beyond this point, the, the Satsuma warriors are waiting. Hurry! Go! Good grief. Damn it! Everyone, scatter! Don't let the enemy see you! All taken away. Yamazaki, protect Yukimura. Okay. We have no choice but to retreat for Osaka Castle. Meet back there. Don't die on me, Shimada. Please, stay safe. Shimada should have been saying that to you, Yamazaki. <sighs> we scurried down an animal trail on the side of the path, and Yamazaki and I ran through an unpaved road. Ah. <sighs> Are we going to run into demons? I'm wondering. It'll be interesting. And we'll send in Kimigiku come and save us again. We quickly brushed aside scattered branches and ignored the various cuts we'd received from them. They went that way. Don't let them get away. There should be more. Find them. That gunshot just now. Don't look back. Just focus on getting away. I thought that getting to Yodo Castle meant we were safe, that we'd be able to see Hichikata and the other men and regroup to fight again. However, all I could feel now was despair. Only the warmth from Yamazaki's hand could give me comfort as I'd force myself to run, even as I felt my legs want to collapse from tiredness. There they are! As soon as we'd gotten to a more exposed area, two soldiers armed with rifles found us. Guns were far more savage than a sword, requiring only the pull of a trigger to take someone's life. As their guns were pointed towards us, I thought about how delicately our lives held in the balance. I don't know what came first. The sound of the gunshots firing, or the feeling of being pushed out of the way. Good grief. The blood. Yamazaki?! <sighs> oh. The sound of the sword just being like choo, 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 choo. Ah! Yamazaki threw his kunai with all of his might And it landed right on the hearts of the Satsuma men A stick type throwing weapon Often employed by ninja Cool But I didn't care about that at all <laughs> Might have looked cool but Yamazaki are you okay? Why did you I lifted Yamazaki's body To see a pool of blood beginning to form around his thighs Great. With tears in my eyes, I put pressure on his wound, and he looked at me, crying. He's crying great. Oh no! I didn't care one bit about my safety. All that mattered to me was that he was hurt. Why... why would you try and protect me? You should know, Yamazaki. If my organs are safe, then my injuries will heal. If you had just left me be, you wouldn't have been hurt. You're right. Thinking back on it now, I guess it didn't really make sense to do so. And if I hadn't been hit just now, then we could be running off together instead of this. But then... Yamazaki softly patted my head, gazing into my puffy eyes, and he smiled brightly. Forgive me, Yukimura. What you said was true, but I suppose it was just instinct to move and protect you. Even if it wasn't fatal... Would it have been okay for me to just watch you get hurt instead? 
Should I just use you as a shield then? To hell with that. I felt a sickening mixture of gratitude and guilt. And more than either of those, I'd felt a sense of warmth well inside of me. I'm so sorry for doing this to you. Thank you so much. My words landed somewhat on both ends of the spectrum, and Yamazaki gave a troubled laugh. <laughs> no, don't apologize. This wound is of my own doing. And yet, now that we're here, fighting will be difficult. How can we make our escape? Uh-oh. <laughs> How unsightly. <laughs> ah! Well, look who it is. In your condition, you're no longer fit to protect her. I guess I just thought too highly of you. You're not good enough to serve as her guard dog. <laughs> Kazuma! Potentially the worst person we could encounter. I immediately reached for my kadachi on my hip. Yamazaki, too, went to reach for his sword in support of me, then he stood and glared at Kazuma. That's right. You are affiliated with the Satsuma, are you not? And it's been a while since we've met last, but now you're stooping so low as to pick on fleeing soldiers, eh? <laughs> oh, not the kick, I hope. Gah! Kazuma mercilessly aimed for the spot where Yamazaki had been shot, kicking him repeatedly. Kazuma, stop! Get away from Yamazaki! Yamazaki swung with slow pain slashes, but Kazuma exerted no effort to dodge them. It seems like I need to punish you, too. But for now, why don't you sit still? Oh, what was that? He swiped at my leg, and I fell to the ground as the wind was knocked out of me. Man, those smooth moves, though. <coughs> I was gasping for air, struggling to catch a breath as Cosma glared menacingly above me. Then, Cosma grabbed Yamazaki and grinned. He sunk his finger into Yamazaki's bullet wound and began to twist it in the bloody flesh. Good god. What did you call me again? Say it. All that sound. Go! It doesn't seem like you have much to say when the cat's got your tongue, do you? S Stop! Stop it! I could hear Yamazaki's flesh tearing, and his screams of agony were unbearable. Just then. Oh, Toshi! Toshi's coming to save Yamazaki this time around! Chikage Kazuma! I feel way better now. <laughs> the esteemed commander of losers has arrived. Following a deafening clash of swords, I could hear a familiar voice come from nowhere. Hichikata! Yamazaki, Yukimura. You two all right? Yes, I'm fine, but Yamazaki's... You picked the wrong warrior to fuck with. Hichikata's veins practically popped out of his arm from how tightly he grabbed his katana, and he swung once more. You call that a swing? Or are we dancing? Ugh! Kazuma parried with ease, avoiding Hijikata's strikes as he smirked tauntingly. Seems like you're a little worn out, which is funny considering you spend most of your time running away like a scared little girl. Little cuts and bruises here and there, and your arms are shot from all the useless swinging you do. Ah, oh, is that a cracked rib I see too? Wow, so brave of you to keep fighting through the pain. He was right. Hichikata had been tirelessly fighting enemy soldiers storming the Fushimi Magistrate. And knowing him, he was doing all he could during the retreat to ensure his men's safety. I don't know how he could have had any strength left to walk, let alone fight someone like Kazuma. Hijikata, please, fall back! There's nothing we can do right now! We have to find a way out of here! So says she. Looks like even she can tell that the dog has been backed into a corner. Nothing we can do right now. I don't see it that way. 
Then, Hijikata reached into his pocket, and my heart dropped as he pulled out a vial. Really? No! The minute I saw it, I panicked. I watched the red liquid slosh back and forth. It was... Water of life, huh? Just how stupid are you? You think I'm stupid, huh? Turns out I don't give a shit what you think. Sadly for you, there's nothing more stupid to me than being too weak to help out my men when they are in need. Hijikata curled his lip as he smirked, opening the bottle with one hand. I'm waiting for Yamazaki to just, like, tackle the, the vial out of his hand. <laughs> just then. Smack! Wow. That ninja reflexes, though. Go! Through the darkness, I saw a hand sharply chop into Hijikata's neck from behind him! <laughs> You're gonna be in so much trouble later. Yama... Zaki? What... the... Oh. Yamazaki... Why did you do that? Yamazaki appeared, looking over Hijikata who'd fallen to the floor, then he picked up the bottle. Alright, here we go. His eyes were silent, filled with resolve. <laughs> Yo, kid, what you doing? <laughs> oh, Cosma. What's the meaning of this, kid? The Shinsengumi needs its commander. It needs Hishikata. There is no way I'm going to let him sacrifice himself to become a creature of the night at the behest of your cruel taunts. In his stead, there are plenty of other warriors who could invite the darkness unto themselves. No! I see. So you're going to drink it instead. That wretched substance. You're aware of what that means, don't you? What you give up when you drink the water of life. The minute you take it down, you will transform into a bloodthirsty creature who shuns the sun. Your life as a human will be no more. You'll be good as dead. Whatever you used to be will vanish into the cold, shadowy mist. The only thing you'll have to look forward to is the moonlit solitude with that cursed body of yours. And so what? Yamazaki removed the cloth covering his mouth. Hidden underneath his cloth was a grin. The black cloth fluttered into the wind as he put the vial to his lips and swallowed down the water of life in one gulp. Oh boy. Well, let's see what this looks like. <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> my boy! My poor boy! He looks terrifying. He kind of looks like a Sith warrior, actually. To end my life and enter a lonesome darkness. Oh, none of that matters. I prepared myself for such a sacrifice a long time ago, when I took it upon myself to join the Watch. Even if my body succumbs to the darkness, there are those who require my protection. This is my mission! His hair turned white as the winter snow, and his eyes morphed into a blood-red shade. As he transformed into something that was no longer human, Yamazaki screamed out. He drank the water of life and became a fury. Oh boy. If it means I will be strong enough to protect those I care about, I will give my body up to the darkness. Don't underestimate me, Chikage Kazuma! Huh. You're just a yapping insect. Fine, go ahead and die on that cross. I'm going to crush you myself anyway. Yo! Yamazaki screamed as he charged for Cosma, and the ground he'd left from shattered into a cracked circle and he vanished from my sight. My eyes couldn't keep up with him. His powers were clearly beyond his human selves. Ooh. <laughs> Chikaku... <laughs> Chikaku's like, what the hell? Oh. I, I... allowed you to touch me. Not done yet. Faster. Faster! He's like Sonic now. Don't get cocky. Oh. Cosma kicked the floor out of rage. 
Then he bounced off a tree trunk to leap into the air like a raging storm brewing above. Good grief. They exchanged blows, their blades bellowing like thunder over a matter of seconds. I felt like I was watching a dance of lightning as their swords collided and it took my breath away. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Never thought you'd make it this long. I've cut down fake after fake in the past with ease, but... You're one of the faster insects I've had to squash. <sighs> Just as Kazuma had said, Yamazaki fought with a speed and technique unlike any fury I'd ever seen. With every strike, he was pushing his muscles to the point his veins would pop from his flesh and even burst in a blood splatter, but he continued! Yamazaki! He relied on his healing powers as a fury, guiding him to fight with more and more vigor. Yamazaki fought like this could be his last. The mood of the battle intensified greatly. I wanted him to stop, but I knew he couldn't. I was aware of the determination that brought him to drink the water of life in the first place. So, you're a little tougher to squash than I thought. But you can't keep this up forever. It'll give. Maybe in a few minutes. Maybe in a few seconds. Or maybe in a few breaths. Looks like the only chance you stand against me is when you squeeze every little bit of power you've got left in that pathetic body of yours. A few breaths will be more than enough. That's all I need to take you down. And I will protect Yukimura and the commander. Pfft. Fat chance. No matter how quickly you buzz around, you're still just a bug. Now, I'm gonna rip those wings off, slowly and painfully, and make you crawl to me. Oh, Demon Cosmos here. Cosmos' hair suddenly lost all color, and horns began to shoot up from his forehead. In the moment that his appearance changed, the air became still and the temperature dropped. Perhaps it was my own demon blood reacting to the change, but I could sense his aura in my chest. My hair stood. This was bad news! A chill slunk down my spine and I screamed out as loudly as I could at Yamazaki. Yamazaki! Get away! Kazuma is- Too late. As Yamazaki tried to jump away, Kazuma seemed to have forecasted his movements, swinging his sword in the direction in which Yamazaki was going. However, the eerie sound of flesh being sliced open never came as I had expected it to. What came into sight was the outline of a burly man in front of me. Whoa! I was expecting Shimada. Amagiri stopped him? Interesting. Mm. Amagiri? What are you doing here? Amagiri, what is the meaning of this? Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> huh? I am asking you why you are getting in my way. If you don't want to die, get the hell out of my way right now. Stop your barking. Go ahead and stab me if you want. The fact you're showing a mere human your demon form will come back to haunt the Kazuma clan. <laughs> uh... Didn't... I need to remember. Didn't Amagiri show his demon form to Sayato? I guess he's not part... Is Amagiri part of the Cosma clan or is Amagiri just there? I can't keep all the stories straight anymore. Or is he just using this as an excuse? What did you just say to me? Or does the figurehead for all demons of the West really need to use his true form to kill a human? Tch. An obvious provocation. <laughs> but it worked. Meh. Very well, Amagiri. I'll let you say face this time. I'd appreciate that. Those Shinsengumi men are approaching. Killing them's no problem. But it has to be the other humans killing humans this time. Kazuma clicked his tongue, sighing, and slowly he directed his glare at us. <sighs> I'll let you go this time. You're wasting your time siding with the Shogunate anyway. They're dirt. That's not true! The Shogunate is just... 
You think I'm lying? See for yourself at Osaka Castle. It's a laugh. <laughs> After his little jeer, Kazuma left with Amagiri, vanishing into the wintry darkness. I'd waited for a second to make sure they were actually gone, and I crumbled to the floor. <laughs> that was nuts. We're... safe now? <laughs> oh, Toshi's awake. I think the more accurate way of looking at it is that we've been spared. Hijikata, you're awake! Uh, yeah. Spare me. Hijikata's brows furrowed and he looked towards Yamazaki. Uh oh. Uh. After a moment, Yamazaki began to fall as he'd exerted all of his energy in the fight. I ran to catch his body. Yamazaki! Are you okay? Oh, he's back. Yeah, I think so. Sorry. You moron! Why the hell did you drink the water of life? I already told you. The Shin Sangumi can't afford to lose you. Commander, we need you, night and day, to lead and guide us in the light. But that gives you no right to- Hijikata, please understand where Yamazaki's coming from. I hugged Yamazaki's body tightly. I used my arms to gauge that there was still warmth in his body, even after becoming a fury. Yamazaki told us. He told us he wanted the power to resist fate. Even if he had to succumb to the darkness, he wished to protect the Shinsengumi. After hearing how important it was to him, I couldn't stop him from drinking the water of life. Yamazaki chose this. He chose the path that he is now going down. You idiot. Hijikata began to choke up! Aww! He looked like he wanted to speak, but he didn't. Hey, look over there! That's... Hijikata and Yamazaki! Chizuru's here too! Hey! Everyone alive over there? Nakakura and Harada. A wave of relief came to me upon seeing our friends running over to us. Huh. <sighs> I'd helped lift Yamazaki since he passed out, and hope flickered in my heart. <laughs>